Let's take a look at problem 8.1, which asks us to prove or disprove each of the following statements. So the first one for 8.1 is for all natural numbers n, if n squared is even, then n to the fifth is also even. So we're going to use a direct proof for this. First of all, we're going to say, assume n is even. This is assuming p. So uh, then we can say that there exists a k, natural number k, such that n can be written as 2k, and this is straight from the definition of an even number, which means that when we write out n to the fifth, we can actually write it as n squared times n cubed, which is equal to 2k times n cubed, which is equal to 2 times k n cubed. And by the definition of an even number, n to, f n to the fifth is even because we can write it as 2 times some other number, we'll call it L, in the natural numbers. So we have shown that if n is even, then n to the fifth is also even. Now we'll take a look at problem 8.2, which states for all natural numbers, n squared minus n plus 3 is odd. So we're going to do this as a set of direct proofs for each of the cases. So we have case 1, n itself is even. If we assume that n is even, then we know that there exists a k in n such that n is equal to 2k, again by the definition of even numbers. Then we can write n squared minus n plus 3 is equal to 2k squared minus 2k plus 3, which is equal to 4k squared minus 2k plus 3, which is equal to 2 times 2k squared minus k. And now we're going to do a tricky thing here. We're going to split up this 3 into 2 plus 1. So the 2 comes in here, plus 1. And then here we have a plus 1. And now we know that odd numbers take the form of 2 times some l in n plus 1 which means that we've shown that n squared minus n plus 3 is odd when n is even. Now let's take a look at the second case where n starts out as an odd number. So then we know there exists a k, and this will be a different k from the one in the even case, but we can keep using k. So there exists some k in n such that we can write n equals 2k plus 1. So now we have n squared minus n plus 3 is equal to 2k plus 1 squared minus 2k plus 1 plus 3. This is equal to, so if we just FOIL this out, we get 4k squared plus 2k plus 2k. Uh, plus 1 minus 2k plus 1 plus 3. So if we just start canceling terms, we have this is minus 2k and this is plus 2k. This is essentially a minus 1 and a plus 1. So we get 4k squared plus 2k plus 3, which is equal to 2 times 2k squared plus k plus 1 plus 1 and again we have it in this form of 2 times some natural number l plus 1 which means that n squared minus n plus 3 is odd. Since we've covered all of the cases either n is even or odd we don't care which one it is and we've shown that regardless of which one it is n squared minus n plus 3 is odd. So we have finished our proof. So we're going to prove problem 8.3 by using actually the contrapositive this time. So we know that it's of the form x plus y greater than or equal to 20 implies that x is greater than or equal to 10 or y greater than or equal to 10. So what we need is not of x greater than or equal to 10 or y greater than or equal to 10 
implies not x plus y greater than or equal to 20. So this is the contrapositive, and we need to show this. As soon as we've shown this, then we've shown the original statement, and we're done. So let's continue with the negation here. So we know from De Morgan's law that we need to negate each of the individual ones and then flip this guy upside down, turn an or into an and. So this statement turns into x less than 10 and y less than 10 implies that x plus y is less than 20. So this is what we want to show. So we know that x is less than 10. We can add y to both sides. So we say x plus y is less than 10 plus y. But we know that y is less than 10. So we can actually write this as less than 10 plus 10. And this is because y is less than 10. And this is equal to 20. Therefore, we've shown that x plus y is less than 20. We finished our direct proof of the contrapositive, which finishes off the whole thing. And finally, we'll work on problem 8.4, which says for all real numbers r, if r is irrational, then r squared is irrational. Now this one's actually the quickest of them all, because we know that r equals root 2 is irrational, but r squared equals 2 is not irrational. Thus, we have found a counterexample, and we're actually completely done with the proof because it wasn't a true statement.